Like zombies searching for brains in a classic horror flick, spring mushroom hunters are seeking out brains of their own. These brains are nothing more than a mushroom that is typically hand-sized and has the appearance of a brain, making this mushroom truly unique in many different ways. Welcome to Morel Truths, the miniseries. I'm Justin Yap, and over the course of several episodes, I will explore the theories, science, and traditions behind the morel mushroom. Now once you've accumulated spots and begin to find morels, many questions come to mind. How should I harvest them? What is the life cycle? How fast do they grow? Or how do I know when to pick them? They're, they seem to be adaptable. Well, there's a bunch of different ways. You know, that, that depends on who you ask. They're just so tiny, it's, it's not worth your time even picking them. I just locate them, and then I wait. Oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. There's one on the end of that stick right there, Ruthie. I know. I know. First in is first. When you find a morel, we need to determine at what stage of the growing cycle it is at. That can depend heavily on the weather at the time. Uh, the mycelium is the plant that's underground, and the, the mushroom is the fruit itself. I, I see, I want a scientist to actually show me how it, I've, I've tried understanding how that actually works. It has been proven that morels grow on an average of a few centimeters a day for the first few days during its germination process, before it rapidly changes to an average rate of an inch a day for around seven to ten days. They can get as big as five to nine inches and one to three and a half inches in diameter. They can live as long as four to nine days after they hit maturity. I would say typically the life cycle of an individual morel is around two weeks. Knowing the life cycle and the morel's characteristics as it ages are good indicators on when to pick them. With cooperative weather, the morel can survive for almost two weeks before the natural decay process is likely to set in and the process starts all over. Usually you can tell when they start to look unhealthy or if they are ripe by examining the cap of the morel. You will typically find the morel begins to darken as it ages, but that is a good indication that the morel is towards the end of the life cycle and is ready to be picked. So do not be alarmed if you have found one that has lost the top of its cap. If the rest of the morel looks fresh and healthy, then pick it and just trim any bad stuff off later. Many morel hunters, including myself, will use a 50-50 factor. If 50% of it is good enough to eat, then it's worth bagging it. Now that we know what makes a good morel a morel, it is time to start picking. I would say when doing this, cut the morel on the stem just above ground level. This helps ensure that it will grow back next year. You could always pinch the morel right at the ground level, which would break away with little effort. I of course use a blade to ensure a clean cut, but a simple pinch and twist will do the job. Now that we've made our way through the forest using the best methods discussed, you're ready to transport them back to the house. This is where your boxes come into play. Lay all your mushrooms flat in the box. If you pile too many morels on top of each other, the bouncing of the car can actually cause the morels to damage each other on the drive home. This is really only a big deal if you plan on selling the morels. If you want to just eat them, who cares? Alright, so we got today's catch-all loaded up. Now on to home, where preparations of cleaning, cooking, storing, and even selling will occur. Join me next episode as I discuss the best ways to clean, prep, and store your findings.